F12 is the keyboard shortcut. Anyhow, this, you may recognize, this is, um, this is actually the Firebug part. What we were looking at a moment ago is a web developer toolbar. Firebug, this actually also exists more or less in the same fashion in, um, in Google Chrome, which actually I use much more often than Firefox, to be honest. Um, Chrome has an inspect option, which, which sets up this whole area here, which allows me to more than just browse, I can actually, as I mouse over each of these sections and look at the various div sections, I can see where, where is the logo, for example. There it is. So it highlights it for me. It also will compute and figure out and show me here's all the styles that are applied currently to that div section, right, to that division of the page. Um, so that's a very handy thing for debugging, for figuring out why is this logo stuck and won't move to where it's supposed to be, why is this happening. Uh, rather than just banging away at the code, I can actually use this, this tool and actually walk through and see um, where these things are. Uh, for example, or another example, let me scroll down a little bit. That little thing down in there that's in the content section. There it is right there. So I can zero in on where those things are. And again, I can do this with any page. It doesn't have to be my own. <coughs> Um, and see, oh, here's, here's that little navigational kind of thing there. What does it do? I can see some of it in the code, but this kind of maps it out for me much more cleanly. Right, it shows me, well, here's the style. It's actually uh, positioned relative to its surrounding uh, div section. It's um, from the left, 946 pixels over, 440 pixels down, and so on. So I can see all those details, um, really, of any element, um, just by navigating through the page here. So the top navigation section, another example is, uh, let's see, there it is up at the top. And so again, that allows me to debug things or maybe help fine tune some of the things that are happening in the design. Um, again, it also lets me look at any page. It doesn't have to be my own. So if I want to figure out, oh, how did they do that little section there, I can dig in and get that. Now again, I haven't actually played around with all these different options here, uh, but there is a CSS part as well, so I can look directly at the CSS. Um, this is not just the file, this is actually parsed out the file and represented it to me in this maybe prettified form. Um, so some pages have their style sheets where there's ac absolutely no white space whatsoever, which makes it very hard to read for a human, but, um, but much maybe a little bit quicker to download, uh, which is the purpose of doing that. But this will lay it out so that I can actually read it and look at all the various you know, div sections and IDs and so on. There is scripting as well, though I haven't played with that as all, at all yet. You can see it's actually disabled, so that's something else which maybe I would dive into. Um, we can look at the document object model, so dig into what are all the things defined within this document. And some of these are my own creation in JavaScript. You can see some of the things here at the top define the, um, the images uh, that I have here. So that image that we're viewing there and the, the cycling through images is all driven by most of these variables here. Now, one other thing, um, I come back to the toolbar. Let me move this thing down. For a few other things with the toolbar, I can also deal with forms, which I think I do have one example of form here, contact form. I'm going to click over to it. So I can deal with forms, but I haven't played a lot with this yet. Um, but there are some forms options there anyways. I can deal with images. I can disable images. One very important aspect of web design is um, coming up with alternative labels or names or text for all the images uh, for folks that may have screen readers um, or folks who just turn the images off and just want the text, uh, depending on how they're looking at the page. So I can disable certain images, all images. I can also just display the, the alt attributes of each image, which I don't think I filled them all in yet. There they are at the top, but let's see if there's better results on this page. So near each image, you can kind of see how these make sense. There's the alt tag for my picture up there. There's my name, my wife's name, my daughter's name. You can see the alt tags just are, are thrown in there. And they do become part of the layout temporarily. So I'll get rid of those. But similarly, I can get the image dimensions, file, uh, what else? file sizes for those images, image paths, where they're sourcing from. Um, so I can display all that information on the site. So really pick it apart. Very useful, I can find broken images. I can outline all images to see what their outline is. And so that tells me the, 
not just where they are, but it tells me how much padding is between the image and its, and its edge. So you can see my picture up there has a uniform padding of, I don't know, maybe a dozen pixels or so. This one and that one have you know, padding left and right and so on. So I can kind of see that visually by using this toolbar. Turn that back off. Hide background images. Oops, that goes away. And well, that's about it. There's other things there you can dive into. Information. Lots of things we can display and view. Um, some of these are self-explanatory. Miscellaneous. Some of the things that are very handy here. Uh, we can actually turn this into almost a design um, kind of tool, like a display ruler, which is maybe not for better. So there we go. We can identify a grid and get pixel locations. Uh, so if I'm working on a design and want to see where something is, let's see if I can grab it from the corner here. I get an idea of, again, maybe how wide that is, where that's located. So again, this is all operating on a live web page, which is kind of the interesting, maybe cool part about it. Um, there's one thing I use. Let me see if I can find it. I can edit the HTML. <coughs> One other thing, I'm trying to find it here. Here we go. Um, I can also validate links. So one of the things which is often a pain about web design is our websites in general is keeping all the links um, current. And so this tool actually has a lot of, actually all these validate things lead over to uh, uh, the w3.org site that has the various uh, validation um, services up. And so this, let's see if we found any broken links. It does take a little while to go through all the links. But it should tell me if there are any broken links. So it came up with. Let's see. Oh, it skipped some of them. The robots exclusion rules. It says my mail to link is been disabled. Oh, okay, good enough. So I think all my links are good. It's saying that these are, are not valid because they're, uh, they're actually blocked by the validator's own robots.txt file. Oh, that's fine. Oh, but what's this? Wait a minute. <laughs> what are you doing to me, Marthy? I think that's my fault. So it says, um, this link is missing a trailing slash. So I'd have it in my code like that. And huh, I didn't know that. I guess I should really have it with a slash on the end. So I better go fix that. Marthy got me in trouble. Okay. Maybe something also to use here would be validating the HTML. Yeah. yeah, right. So my pages, I know my um, academic site here does validate. This one probably does not. But that again is almost if you've done web design, you might know what this is. If you haven't, think of it as compiling your code and making sure that it all is perfect without any warnings really. Things might still work, but they do have warnings in them. Let's see, a few other things. You can validate the CSS, validate links I showed you, validate section 508, which has to do with accessibility. So making sure that all images do have alt tags on them. If you're missing any alt tags, that'll identify that. Um, among other things, maybe I'll just do that one and then move on. So right, this will tell me of all the various things that need to be true for accessibility. So, what I wanted to lead up to, maybe the last thing I'll mention, just in closing, is Drupal. So Drupal, and again, I haven't used it very much. Um, Drupal, you can certainly check out uh, drupal.org and look at some of the sites created with Drupal. Drupal's a content management system. So one of the biggest challenges I have with web design is I put my web pages out there for a client or whatever, and then I want to walk away and say, see you later, and maybe collect a big check. Right? But the problem is that they have more content that they want to put up there and they want to make changes and things, you know, new products and new things that are happening. Um, and so what Drupal allows me to do is put that in the hands of the users. Um, and the challenge for me then, which I'm facing now and I have not tackled yet, is to take my design and get it to fit within Drupal, Drupal and then, as I said, put Drupal out there for folks to use. Now I'll show you just one or two quick sites, here's one that I found, that does use Drupal popular science, so you can see that it, you can actually create and then maintain a pretty, pretty well-designed site 
terms of Google. So behind the scenes, there are a lot of administrative options that you can use. Defining users, um, defining pages, defining content, what stories appear, and so on. So let me close right there. I know I maybe ran over, but I appreciate, appreciate the invitation more than any questions, let me know. So what, uh, you know, why does White House, New York State Senate use group? Oh, that's the other example, yes. White House, which one is it? Whitehouse.gov or New York, New York Senate as well, right? They also use it. Well, it's free. <coughs> that's always a good thing. So yeah, here's another site that also uses Drupal. Again, the key, everyone in your programs, right? What's the biggest problem you face when you program? We never face problems. <laughs> I'm gonna should I shut this down in the meanwhile, or do you want to use it? <laughs> what happens when you're done writing code? Are you done? Maintaining. You're just beginning this maintenance. So the biggest pain for software development. And something I even learned firsthand in industry is, yeah, as soon as you write code, it's out there, great, it's working. You go home, but then you get the call, wait a minute, something broke, this thing needs to be updated. So anyways, Drupal allows you to put that maintenance task into the hands of other folks. And not only maintenance, allows folks to control their own content. So all the bells and whistles and fancy things that might happen with this site or another site, um, that's up to me as a programmer to build in. But the content itself, you know, let someone else be the content publishers or providers or writers or whatever and fill those in and be able to make the sort of like a blog or a wiki page, you know, upload images, upload links, upload all sorts of stuff. So that's the big win that Drupal has and Drupal's used quite often. <coughs>